Hey, how's it going? My name is Troy, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a professional intake with an airbox system of Ram Air. Now, I'm not talking about one of those um, fart can sounding ones that have no drive whatsoever. We're talking about a professional K&N closed system that will tack on 20 to 30 horsepower easy. Now, we only mess, with, of course, with the best materials and long-lasting. Therefore, we're going to have a K&N filter. All right. These are our two car subjects. My car, a 1992 BMW 325iS, and my friend's car, who just had an acorn drop on it, will be a 96 Grand Marquis, 4.6 liter. So, these are the two cars. Okay, we're going to start with my car first. Simply, most uh, intake systems, even K&N, they have isolated, they have a, a uh, plastic mold that they you take out with the natural air box, but it doesn't have any more air come in. So yeah, they may claim you know, up to 20 horsepower in addition, but if you have no more air coming in, then you, all you really have, even though it's isolated, is the engine heat blocking your, your basic ultimate power. So when you add a ram air, direct air from the road that you're already using by simply pushing through it, you gain all your horsepower back, plus then the temperature of the outside actually can cool the internals of your engine as well as the filter. In the winter time you especially see more horsepower because the colder, denser air gets into the intake faster and you have more power. In the summer you'll see a lot more fuel economy as well as the spring. And regardless you're going to gain fuel economy in the process anywhere from two to five um, miles per gallon better depending on how accurately you do it. This is mine. This is the simpler one that I built. It's very simple. You just take metal and you cut it but you want to use steel because it's a lot stronger and it conforms better when you bend it and you want to wrap it with foil tape. You can get this for six bucks a roll. Simply wrap it, it gains rigidity as well as also by having it wrapped you reduce the temperature of the engine and it also deflects light better therefore underneath you just have a cooler engine. Canon air filter which is already getting a little bit dirty in this case because of the, the ram air. Ram air is very simple if you look in right down here you'll see the pipe coming in from underneath. Now I just have a 90 degree elbow. It comes in right here underneath starting down at the bottom of the car bra. And I have it like this. Over here, my friend. I have it right here with this mesh here so that it blocks out the initial um, debris that could be coming in. It enters right up into the top. I'm about to lose battery. It enters in right up to the top and you have an effective system. Once this comes right in, it goes directly into the intake and you get more horsepower. And by having it isolated, when the air comes in, it has nowhere else to go but straight in. But on my car, I didn't go through an extreme amount of effort and totally enclose it. Therefore, it doesn't have a vacuum pressure. It just simply isolates it more. Now, if you want to get really creative, for example, with some cars like this with the BMW, I have my temp sensor, my outside temp sensor that I put in here so I know the exact temperature going into my intake. These cars have a nice tone. BMWs are very respond very well to air filters, especially on the highway, which I can't really show here. But this is the simpler type. So again, the sum up of this: steel, foil tape, intake. In this case, elbow and zip ties are all you need, and cutting tool to cut the steel. Okay, now we're at the my friend's car and uh, we have a monstrous K&N filter if you notice this thing is huge I mean it's pretty big this one costs seventy dollars it depends oh here's another good example this system right here the filter was only forty dollars and the total was about seventy because it was it was just a simple piece of metal cut and um, supported behind the back and the tube was like ten dollars so it wasn't that much this was in the upwards of about hundred and thirty dollars in the end because there's a lot more had to be done in this case the bigger filter this was seventy dollars off the bat we have the ram air again through here we have the tube starting here we took an exhaust vent for a dryer line and compressed it so that it would have a wider entrance of air from underneath the car and it goes up and around it goes up and around like this from underneath. It's a four inch diameter pipe all the way around. It's folded. And we cut a hole in the bottom of basically just plastic. There's nothing there except the stock air box that we took out, which was huge, mind you. 
We have it come around here. And when we cut the metal, this was also a thin piece of metal around here that we wrapped with the foil tape. And we use zip ties to secure it in place. We have another, we have three sheets of metal, one that comes up here, and they have a one mount side and ways into it, like this, and then another one like that. And you zip tie the pieces in between, you cut holes in the metal, and then you simply tape over the zip ties and you have a uniform box that air can't escape from. So initially when the air comes up through the pipe, when it comes up through here, it's got nowhere to go, so it goes up. Some of it goes straight into the filter because it's constant pressure as it's moving in. And the other part goes underneath in this pocket under here and just sits there. So whenever you step on the gas pretty hard, you have an instantaneous boost right into the intake when you're driving. Now again, the ram air only works when you're moving. It's hard to demonstrate that much in the meantime. However, when idling and low speeds, the K&N does what it does best. Excellent filtration and high air quality flow. Everything else in this case, we even get to have a pipe because there's nothing for it, so we had to literally cut the end of the mass airflow uh, pipe and then tape full tape on which is incredibly strong as you notice it's, it's, it's holding it no problem it's sitting there shaking and it's not even moving but in the end these cars do a lot better and uh, they sound wonderful and their throttle response increased a lot how much would you say that uh, you gain as far as speed off the initial time probably about a 20 percent increase 20 percent increase yeah all told but it's definitely noticeable oh yes without a doubt and economy, speed, and everything. How about the, uh, how does the temperature change? The colder, it has a lot more kick to it? A lot more kick. Started up early in the morning, and uh, you can get going pretty fast, pretty quickly. Especially, even with a large car like this. Which is not small by any means, if you notice. <laughs> I love to film my friend, but he's not the most camera friendly guy in this case. Doesn't want to make it on YouTube. <laughs> That's okay. But well, we're going to start these two cars up so you can hear the, how they sound. So you get an idea of what we're talking about here. I want you to... Shit. There we go. Out of a stock 92 325IS, double clutching. Get it, get it. And my lovely cameraman is grinning like he's afraid. <laughs> I wonder why that is. Will I scare you, Rory? Just a little bit. <laughs> but for a grand marquee, let's think about this. A 96 cop car, unmodified, except for the filter. Some dude's doing... And here, watch the gradual acceleration. Just watch how it naturally drives now. And he just kind of cruises along, no problem. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. B E A beautiful. This came in a coincident timing because we're running out of light to film. But I think it sums it up. What do you think? Last comment. Uh for a granny car, she sure runs fast. <laughs> Cut, that was good.